This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Neighbor.com, which is a really great idea for rideshare drivers. What if you made an extra $10,000 every year without doing any extra work? You can earn money on Neighbor.com by renting out the space you don't use to people in need of storage or long-term parking. Like if you have a garage, a shed, driveway, or, or parking space, start monetizing it on Neighbor.com. Neighbor is free to use, and unlike your normal 9-to-5 job, Neighbor lets you earn passive income without ever leaving the comfort of your home. Neighbor also protects each host with its $2 million guarantee. So if you're looking for an additional way to earn income, check out Neighbor.com and see how much money your extra space can make you. An extra few hundred bucks each month sure comes in handy as the economy starts to open up and drivers get back on the road. Drive during the day and make passive income on Neighbor while you sleep. If you use the link in the show notes below to list your space, Neighbor will give you an extra $50 when your space gets rented. Neighbor.com is a no-brainer for side hustlers. So visit host.neighbor.com forward slash ride to get started making money today. Again, it's host.neighbor.com forward slash ride. All right, let's start the show. Welcome to the Ride Share Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Well, good morning, drivers, Uber drivers and Lyft drivers. Today is a bittersweet day. Today I am recording now, right now, the final episode of the Ride Share Dojo with Jay Crater. So I started this podcast over a little over a year ago. It was just kind of something I thought I wanted to do. I didn't really ever think I would make much money at it. I did make a little bit of money at it, but I didn't make a lot of money at it. Uh, but I was really into the rideshare driving experience, and I was driving and loving it. And after a year now, I just have um, other interests that are taking more of my time. And the thing I love the most about the rideshare industry is writing about it, writing articles about it, making videos about it. So I'm going to continue doing that. But uh, putting out a podcast twice a week, that is going to stop. Uh, and this is the last episode. So the title of this episode is Final Episode. Jay Remembers His Rideshare Driving Career. Um, now I've talked to Harry about this. And we are talking about putting together some other format for this. Maybe some sort of a private club. Uh, where we have insider information. We do maybe a monthly private Zoom call uh, for a very, very small fee. Uh, we're working on that. But that's something down the road, and that will be different than, than this, uh, a, a podcast. So in the last year, um, we've had over 30,000 downloads. So I want to say thank you to all the people who have uh, listened to this, uh, whether it's been uh, a direct uh, listening from from an app like uh, you know your podcast app or iHeartRadio or Spotify, and then there's also a lot of people that have listened to it <clears throat> on uh, YouTube or on Facebook or on Twitter, right? Um, don't really have numbers on those. Um, so thank you, thank you so much. So let me just rifle through some. Uh, some of the highlights for me, some interesting little tidbits about four years and 26 and a half thousand rides. So a lot of people have asked me, you know, what's, what was your best ride? 
My best ride occurred, I, I kid you not, within the first six months of my career. I was in San Francisco and I picked up Jimmy Chin. You may not know who Jimmy Chin is, but Jimmy Chin is a, rock, a mountain climber. Uh, he's a photographer and a filmmaker. He actually, uh, when I met him, uh, I knew about him. I had actually written a, an article about five, um, five documentaries every, everyone should see, and, and uh, his documentary called Meru was on my list. He got in my car. I recognized him, and uh, he was going to the airport. I picked him up right, at, um, right near the Painted Ladies, Alamo Square. And uh, so we had a nice long half hour ride and we talked the whole time and he was just a really great, cool guy. And he was telling me about this movie he was working on called Free Solo, which of course became Free Solo, you know, and uh, won an Academy Award for the best documentary. So that was pretty great. I saw him go up on stage with his wife and, and uh, you know, accept the award for best documentary. So that was, that was great. I uh, just thoroughly enjoyed meeting him and talking to him. Just two guys, you know, talking about work and the struggles of balancing life, uh, you know, with your work and all of that. What's my worst ride? Well, I've had a few unpleasant experiences, but the one where I, I, I'll say I was the most uh, afraid uh, occurred in the daytime. And I picked somebody up and... Um, they just look like a scary, scary character. Um, and they had a big black case that I went to pick up and put in my trunk. And he said, no, I'll carry, I'll, 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 I'll do that. So uh, that was weird. And then we were driving across uh, the city and we were, I was going over to Marin. And I don't know, this, this uh, lizard brain fear kicked in. And I thought, oh my God, you know. This guy's a terrorist, and that's a bomb, and he's going to blow up the uh, Golden Gate Bridge. And I was, uh, you know, just a heartbeat away from stopping the car and, uh, and, and discontinuing the ride as I approached the Golden Gate Bridge. But um, uh, he was sitting in the back seat. He had an earpiece in. He was talking to somebody. He seemed very sick, uh, sniffly. And I thought, oh, my God, he's a suicide bomber. You know, someone's going to, someone's talking him through it. You know, they're promising him, you know, 80, 80, 80 virgins when he dies. And I, ha I had this whole thing running around in my head. And for whatever reason, I said, uh, I'm just being crazy. And I just kept driving and uh, holding that steering wheel tight, going across the Golden Gate Bridge. And we got across and I dropped this guy off at his apartment. And that was that. But boy, was I scared. That also occurred in my first uh, first year. So that was my, uh, my worst ride. I've had some people in my car that were just like off, you know, and you can just tell they're off and you're a little concerned about what they're going to do. Uh, the worst is having somebody who's off in a, in a uh, you know, an Uber pool uh, or a Lyft line and they're bothering the other passengers. But overall, you know, out of 26,500 rides, I've had maybe, you know, four really unpleasant experiences. So very, very small. I've been very, very lucky. Um, what's my best day? Best day was uh, $600. I made $600 in a day. I did that twice um, driving on New Year's Eve, um, where I actually drove during the day, and then I went, and then I rested, and then I went back out around 11 o'clock. And I drove till about three in the morning and uh, cleared $600. Um, I didn't do that last year. I did it the two years before that. So that would have been 2017 and 2018. And then I wrote articles and made videos about it. Best week uh, was definitely a week where I, I drove uh, hard for six days and uh, half a Sunday and I made $3,000. I got, I got a nice bonus from Uber. I got a nice bonus from Lyft. Um, and, and the surge and the prime time were, you know, pretty good. It's before things really changed. That was uh, probably the end of my first year in San Francisco. The best uh, ride I've ever had was a one-hour ride, and I made $155. Uh, 
Um, this is when uh, surge was, you know, multiplier surge, and I and I, I just hit it right. It was a 5.5 surge, and the woman needed a ride in the rain from San Francisco, from the Millennium Tower uh, to uh, Emeryville. No, 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 to uh, to uh, Foster City. Yeah, to Foster City. And uh, turned out to be $155. That was great. What's been the biggest lesson that I've learned driving all those people, you know? 26,500 people have walked, gotten in and out of my car. You, you learn a few things about, you know, the human, the human. And uh, what I learned is uh, people want to be listened to. And if I can provide that service and learn from what they're telling me, uh, that's like a magic key to life. Learning to listen and learn. Not talk so much. Listening. Listening. Asking a, a good question. And listening for the answer. I learned so much, so much talking to people in my car. The other lesson I learned is to enjoy the moment. You know, when you're in the car and you've got a passenger, you know, you're very much in the moment. And that's a good feeling. You're not thinking about what happened yesterday. You're not thinking about what's going to happen in the future. That kind of happens when you're in between passengers. Um, but when someone's in the car, you know, you got got the music playing, you got a little conversation going, you got to focus on where you're going, don't miss any turns. It really puts you in the moment. And I think that's one reason we all like it so much is uh, it gets us out of our head. So those are those are the two kind of lessons that I've, I've learned. And, and for me, it was just an I- ideal kind of lifestyle for at least for the first three years when I could make pretty good money because you could work hard, in San Francisco, I could make 2000 a week and I could work hard. Um, and then when I wanted to take off and go someplace, which I love to do, that's my passion is traveling, um, I could do it, you know, and then I could come back and just pick right up where I left off, right? And I didn't have a boss who was, I didn't have to think about what the work was when I was going to get back. I didn't have to think about work piling up. I've done that in the past, you know, where you've worked a regular job. Here I could just stop. It was my last ride. I got nothing to think about. I am free and clear to go. And when I come back, all I got to do is uh, put gas in my car, get my vanilla sweet cream cold brew, and uh, put my app on, and I'm back in business. All right, get the car washed. And that was pretty sweet. That was pretty sweet when it was such a great deal. Um, and it's still, I'm sure... If I went out there and figured it out, I could figure out how to still make $2,000 a week right now, today, you know, with all that's going on. Uh, I know we interviewed or talked to somebody at the Rideshare Guy who made $4,000. He, he worked 80 hours. He made $50 an hour saying that, you know, the demand is down, but there's so few drivers that it keeps him very, very, very busy. And I'm sure he could crush it on tips also because passengers are very happy to have somebody out there. And um, yeah, so I'm sure it's still a great gig. I, I can't do it. I'm not going to do it because I, I live with an 81-year-old and I don't want her to get, uh, get this virus. So when there's a, a, um, a vaccine or I can have, you know, 90% certainty that I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay healthy, um, then, I'll, then I'll jump back in my car uh, just for the giggle and see what it's like again. Um, but until then... I'm I'm sidelined. All right. That's it. That's the last episode. Some great stuff came out of the last four years. I'm still gonna write articles. I'm still gonna make videos. You can reach out to me, you know, through through the, the normal ways. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just uh, discontinuing this twice a week uh, rideshare dojo podcast. It's been my pleasure, really. And um, that's a wrap. So fist bump to all you drivers out there. You guys rock it out there every day. I honor you. Thank you so much for sharing your journey with me. Be safe. This is Jay Crater, Nomad Jay, saying this, the final episode, is in the can. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. 
Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.